Hey, everybody. My name is David Michael. And I am Michael Carter. And we are Ridiculously Bored. So, David, as I sit here in pain, let me tell you what happened. Tell me what happened. So, it's not even a great story. Nothing crazy happened. Oh, then don't tell it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. We'll leave those boring ones for you. <laughs> so, I'm a fat guy. I'm very unflexible. Can't reach my feet. So, my wife has to cut my, wife has to cut my toenails. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on, <laughs> hold on time out. Time out. I have to unpack this. So... I thought maybe like, because you mentioned before we we started recording, you mentioned that you couldn't touch your feet. So I thought maybe you know you're hitting the gym, you're a little bit sore. Like in general, you you can't touch it, you can't cut your own toenails. In general, Holy since I had shit. back surgery, look, I've never been the one who could touch his toes anyway. But after I had back surgery, what is it, five or six years ago now? Like they might as well be another country. <laughs> Wow, your wife is a fucking right. saint because I've seen your toenails. They're nasty as shit. Yeah, don't worry. She says that every single time she cuts them. <laughs> <laughs> and I talk about my two toes. I got one toe that I call uh, Iraq invading Kuwait. It's like looped over the other toe a little bit. I don't know how I got that. but So let me go back to my point, though. Go to your point. So I, and you're, I have been going to the gym and stuff like that. And hopefully I'm trying to strengthen my core and mm-hmm. strengthen myself in general and get fit. But I have to go into the bathtub to be able to put my foot up. And the reason why I do that is to make it a little bit easier on my wife and bring my foot a little bit higher. She cuts her nails. In the process of putting my foot back over the bathtub to get out, I don't know what the fuck happened. I tweaked something. I've been in massive pain all day. Oh, Jesus. And my wife ends it with, really, from that? <laughs> <laughs> No fucking sympathy. I'm like, I'm just telling you what happened. Ugh, I'm in pain too, but it's it's for for what I said. It's my son and I decided that this was going to be the summer of swole, so we're both uh, going to the gym three four days a week, and uh, we've just been hitting it pretty hard for the last couple of weeks. So we're gonna try. We're gonna see how long it lasts. See uh, if we can keep it going all summer long. But uh, should be interesting. So you've always been relatively fit. How, when was the last time you like went to the gym on a regular basis? Um, it's actually been a couple of years, believe it or not. I went through uh, a couple of phases for me. And, and you know this about me. I, I, once I get my mind set on something, I just kind of do it until I, I get bored with it. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a point where I was doing martial arts and I felt like the only way I can get better at martial arts was to get stronger and more fit. So I just started, you know, in addition to the martial arts, going to the gym four or five times a week, mostly at night while my uh, kids were sleeping so that I wouldn't miss any family activities. But it got to a point of where I was, like I said, four or five times a week for the better part of six or seven months. I bulked up pretty big, pretty quick. In fact, from one Vegas trip to the next, I remember showing up and you were like what the fuck did you strap weights to your mouse what the hell are you doing steroids might have been uh, a comment that (laughs) (laughs) accusations might have flown (laughs) yeah i just you know so you know that was probably the last time i hit it hardcore and that's going back probably five to ten years and then you know i probably dialed it down to about once or twice a week for a while and then i just cut it out all together and I was like, ah, I can do this at home. And then I tried to do it at home. And then after like, you know, a couple of months of trying it at home, I'm like, ah, this is a fucking waste of time. I'm not gonna do it anymore. Like lifting the spoon in this ice cream <laughs> is the same thing. <laughs> it's a curl. So the cool thing is once you are in great shape, it takes you the better part, or at least it takes me the better part of a year to unravel all of that fitness. So I literally did That's nothing good. and you know, ate didn't have a diet or anything like that, ate whatever I want when I wanted. And it took me about a year to really start to start to look at myself and go, man, you're, you're a freaking pig. (laughs) You need to do something (laughs) about this. So, um, and then I've been, you know, I have my like equilibrium weight. Everybody has an equilibrium weight, like the weight that if you Mm -hmm. do nothing, that's just where you're going to sit at. Right. And mine ends up being between 190 and 200 pounds. So, um, 
if I'm healthy and not working out, I'm maybe at 175, 180. If I'm unhealthy and not working out, I'm probably pushing to 205. Ironically, when I'm at my fittest and working out four or five days a week, I'm to 205. So you just replace the fat with muscle. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> so my my guy now, so I have a guy, his name's Skip. And he is the typical motivator when he's getting you to Does he call ass. you fat lard ass? No, he's not no, typical. He doesn't. He uh <laughs> no, that's my typical friend. <laughs> um so he, he always saying these motivating things, and for some reason he, he's just not accepting that I'm like, look, I got bad knees. I'm like had a couple surgeries. Yeah, that doesn't work you know, with one trainers. not too long ago. Yeah. Right? I have bad knees. So there's certain things. So this week he was like, all right. He's like, do you know how to do a burpee? And I'm like, I think I've heard what it is. He's like, let me show you. Because he always no. shows you. And then mine never looks like his. But he's like, let me show you what to do. So he did it. And I just went, nope. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what do you mean? I go, I can't do that, dude. I go, I can't do that with my knees. I go, you got to think of something else. So he sat there for a minute. And he was like, all right, let me think. Let me think. So he brought over. Like one of those, um, uh, it's, it's not a yoga. Um, uh, what's the the class, the gymnastics where people do and they dance and shit? Zumba. Like Zumba. It's like a Zumba step that's like three steps up. So he's like, how about we do this? Do you think you can use this as kind of a, like that I can do? So instead of getting down, doing the push up, you jump up and onto the step? Well, no, I used that, but I didn't need to get like my whole body down. So I was able to put my hands on that and well, then just kick out the legs. I see what you're saying. So. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. How um so how big is this gym that you're going to? Is it is it decent size? Is it like a big chain? It, no, it's it's a it, no, it's just a guy. It's a guy in the gym, but he has all like the real deal mm. equipment. So he has um uh, about I'd say about fourteen different pieces of mm. gym equipment. So he has all the normal stuff, um, and he's just you know it's pretty good price and it's one on one. So I like yeah. that aspect. My son actually goes uh, once a week. We both go twice a week and then another time i go yeah. by myself and some people need that like motivation like somebody yelling telling you what to do you know giving you a cadence mm -hmm. telling you when to stop when not to stop stuff like that i mean i've yeah well and it makes me go that's the other thing i have to go i fucking paid wow for plan, that doesn't so. always work too i've paid for shit where i'm like ah fuck it, i don't want it <laughs> it's just money the 12 year <laughs> it's just money i'll go make more once. <laughs> speak so it's <laughs> funny because I, I actually wanted to talk about gyms today so have you heard of lifetime fitness i think uh, I it's think a so, national yeah. chain i'm pretty sure it's a national chain um and i've i've been i've done la fitness i've done mountainside fitness which i think is more of an arizona thing i've done um Planet Fitness, you know, the purple and orange or purple and yellow one. Yeah. Um, Lifetime Fitness to me is like the, uh, it's the, it's the Caesar's Palace of, of gyms. It's huge. It's got a ton of stuff. It's the most expensive. Um, I mean, a single membership probably costs 70 to a hundred bucks a month for a family. You're looking at a couple hundred bucks a month. So um, so we've tried them all and we kind of, I did lifetime for a while and then we kind of made our way back to li lifetime fitness. And I can't, I can't tell you how much I actually missed it because it makes going to the gym so much more enjoyable. The locker rooms are nice. There's like three pools. There's all sorts of like stuff to do. So we've actually, we're going like, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And on Saturdays we end up going in the morning and then we hang out at the pool for a couple hours and just chill. And it ends up being like a country club. And I was at my friend's house and and he and his family belong to a country club. And I, I don't know exactly what they're paying, but it's to the tune of like, you know, 500 to $2,000 a month, something in that range, right? Mm -hmm. And the only yeah. difference is they have a golf course, which I don't play golf, and they serve alcohol, which, I mean, if the fitness gym served alcohol, that would be pretty freaking cool. Although I think it would defeat the purpose of the gym. But, uh, <laughs> and if they yeah. serve nachos, <laughs> <laughs> they do have like I this whole up. cafeteria and like a whole menu. It's, it's, it's pretty damn sweet. So it's, it's a, akin to a, a country nice. club. That's nice. It's nice that you go to a nice gym. So I had signed up for a gym about two years ago. Uh, we ended up canceling it because of COVID. And the reason why we signed up was kind of what you talked about. I had a pool attached to it so the kids mm -hmm. could use the pool as well if my wife and I wanted to go to the gym. And my cousin Yanni is also a member there. So I went with him a couple of times. Again, as you said, it's good to go. You go with somebody. 
But the fucking locker rooms were 90-year-old dudes, and it was immediate oh, yeah. ass and dick oh, everywhere. Yeah. And, like, I looked at my cousin, and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, come on. I'm like, and the guy's like, you know, it's typical bending over in front of you, so you're seeing this whole crack. I'm like, I'm like, is this needed? I hope I never get to the age where I feel like it's okay to just flaunt my junk to everyone that walks in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it happens, man. I'm telling they don't they older oh, people man. just don't I give a shit. I hope I never get there. It's crazy. Um, so the, the country club thing just it is at least I would guess because I'm looking at some mm-hmm. country clubs now actually because my firm pays for it. That's they have a one mm-hmm. club per partner rule. Um, and yeah. it's like a thousand dollars a month. Plus, you have to commit a certain amount of food that you yeah, and that they have like a minimum, country. like you have to spend a minimum amount of money, which is total bullshit. Mm-hmm. All right, so I want to talk about actually today of, of all days this happened just with the back and everything. But today I got Juvid. Uh, you know what Juvid is? I'm not touching this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching it. All right. Well, I define Juvid as a bat mitzvah okay. in a COVID environment. Okay. So my cousin's kid was her mm-hmm. bat mitzvah today. And because of that, and your cousin's not Jewish, so his wife must be. His wife is Jewish. He's Got not, it. Yeah. Um, and now all of his kids are slowly Jewifying. Whatever it's called. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to fucking but, bleep that out. God damn no, it! You don't have to bleep it out. It's fine. Jewifying's fine. <laughs> no, it's um, not. Each one's going through their bat mitzvah or bar mitzvah as they get older. And so we go, and some people are at the church, uh, the temple. And at the last minute, I think they started allowing more people because all the regulations are being eased. But at that point, I was already like, no, I'll come to the house and we can stream it from the house. That's, you know, everybody's adjusted in one way or another. So my cousin is with me. My cousin um, Baloney's with me. Him and I are watching it on his phone while the, the rest of the people are at the temple. And while it's going on, my cousin leaves the room. So his phone is now unlocked. Oh, which Jesus is Christ. cardinal sin number one with all the guys is you do not leave your phone <laughs> unlocked. So speaking he of goes dick in pics, to, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> he goes in and he's actually filling out the card for the for the girl who's bought misfit was. And while he's doing that, I take his phone and I'm writing things like to all the guys like I love cocks, I love them, <laughs> love cocks, like just anything. Put it down before he comes back in. He realizes later on, but later on that night, my cousin's wife left her phone unlocked. So I took it and I wrote to my cousin nostrils. I wrote, look, we're done. I'm uh, this. I'm over with this. You have such a small dick. I'm like, I can't take it anymore. I want out. It was something like that. He sends me a message a couple hours later when, when he, I guess they finally communicate Figured what has out, happened. Right. Yeah. He's like, my wife's phone is off limits. He's like, off limits. He's like you can't call my wife's phone. She leaves it unlocked. So I wrote to him, Speaking of off limits, and I sent some photos of me and my cousin on his bed oh, <laughs> while they were while, while they were at the temple. So today was a good day. <laughs> oh, you're such a horrible human being. I know. Ironically, though, if you ever left your phone uh, open, I'd probably it's open season. Oh dude. yeah, That's no, I, I would take it into the bathroom. You, you'd probably have my taints, uh, pictures of my taint mm-hmm. from all different angles. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Save that one for All next right. episode. <laughs> <laughs> the, the great taint of 2015. Just leave it at that. So um, you and I just posted a couple kind of random things today. We're just going to kind of go down a list here. Um, do you want to go next? You want to just talk about one of the things on your list? No, I was just kind of firing off things that like happened over the over the past week. My son uh, finally got his driver's license. So that was pretty cool. Excited to uh, – I know you don't know what this is like, but wow. when uh, – when your child finally gets the ability to drive themselves everywhere, it is a uh, it is a day for for celebration. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's a day for all the things that excite parents because you no longer have to drive them anywhere. You no longer have to go get groceries, uh, especially when they just get their license. They're excited. They want to do everything. So it's like, hey, can you go to the store? Can you do this? Can you do that? So that only lasts for like a couple of weeks, but, uh, you know, it's, I, I forgot what it was like cause my daughter's 20, but, um, now that we're back in it, I'm very excited that he, uh, now has the ability to go do things on his own. So that's an exciting, I might not know my son's not old enough to teach him drive, but fucker, I gave you driving lessons when we were growing up. I don't 
don't know if you necessarily gave me lessons. You did let me use left, your. <laughs> you did let me use your car for the driver's test, though. I do remember. No, we, that. but we went to Glen Island a couple. Of oh times. yeah, 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 yeah. So that was actually funny because my aunt, who's only like a year and a half older than me, um, she was the first one to teach me how to drive, and she just kind of we went to Glen Island because it has like the most massive parking lot in in the entire city, right? And there's never anybody there. And she just like got out of the car and she's like, all right, swap seats with me. And I got in and she's like, okay, go. I'm like, you think I actually paid attention to any time anyone was ever driving me anywhere? What do I do? She's like, well, put the car in a drive. I'm like, how do I do that? Like, I had no clue whatsoever. Yeah. Well, knowing your aunt as well as I do, she probably was like, the first thing you do is you put a cigarette <laughs> in your mouth, right? She's like, then you open your beer halfway because you don't want to have to worry about that when you're driving. Yeah, so I'm excited about that. Um, that also frees up a lot of just just random time. I've got, you know, you know I bought a new truck and I've been buying upgrades for it that I want to um, to install. And I just, it's they've been sitting in my garage for the last fucking six months. Now, well, maybe not six months, maybe about two or three months, but I, I'm dying to get them installed and and, and loaded. Have you ordered the truck nuts yet? I have not ordered the truck nuts. I don't think I'm going to get the truck nuts. I told when you I'm my there, cars you are female. And I'll my go. cars are always female. Truck titties then. We'll get truck okay. titties. Right. We'll make them a little bigger. Right. And um, When I'm there in a couple weeks, we'll go and I'll get you truck titties. You know what? They probably do. They probably do. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of like your kid driving the first time, being able to go everywhere, the very first night I took out my parents' mm-hmm. car, I went to a movie. A couple weeks later, I got in a major car accident, but I went to a movie and I parked in the parking lot. And you talk about, I don't know how to put this in drive. I don't know how to do this. Clearly, I never had to worry about where the fucking car was. Because <laughs> you lost it. <laughs> it took me and my friend an yeah. hour after the movie was over. And I'm to guessing find the it car. didn't have an alarm, so you we, couldn't do the beep, 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 beep. Didn't have yeah. an alarm and it wasn't anything special. So it fucking blended <laughs> in with all the others. It took us an hour to find it in this massive yeah, car lot. That's crazy. Um, yeah. So I have found out this week that. My wife, who doesn't necessarily find me funny, she makes sure to say that as oh, many yeah. times as she can. She fucking uses my jokes at work. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you find that out? She said something, and I'm like, she was telling the story at work, it's something that happened, and she's like, and then I said this. And I'm like, I said that to you. And she's like, yeah, I know. She's like, I do it all the time at work. So I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I use your jokes all the time at work. She goes... People don't really know you. They're never going to fucking meet you. She's like, I use them. I play them off as my own. And they think she's funny. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So yeah, she plagiarizes my jokes. You got to tell her, you have to at least laugh at them if you're going to (laughs) plagiarize. Yeah. At least let me know you enjoy why you were here. (laughs) Speaking of work, um, this didn't, this actually happened a few weeks ago, but uh, it just made me think of, of having the conversation with you because we never really talked about this, but have you ever had to fire somebody? Absolutely. I'm the HR partner in my group. So I'm involved in all of that stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. It's not something I enjoy. Eh, I was about to and they caught wind of it and they quit. But um, it's not something that I enjoy because I just I'm not a big fan of babysitting, which means that if I have to fire you, it means that I was a babysitter. So, um, yeah, I just had a guy that was um, not kind of living up to his end of the bargain um, with COVID and everybody working from home, it's a little bit harder to track people and what they're working on. So you kind of have to do a little bit of sleuthing. And uh, I actually did some detective work and found out that he was uh, doing some work for some other companies that he had already, he had worked for in the past and started reaching out to his former employers saying, hey, by the way, you know, are you aware that he's employed full time? And, uh, and as soon as the, I did that, he, he quit like the next day. Yeah, see, my thing is, like, they're uncomfortable conversations. I don't like having them. And the other partners in my group have kind of made a history of not having them. Mm -hmm. They just avoid the whole thing. So that's why I took over the role. Because I'm like, I don't like it. I'm not a fan of it, but I'll do it. I'm Mm -hmm. like, it's important to do. And actually, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that. Just on Friday, I called a guy who's gotten quite a few warnings. And we have the uniqueness that his dad is the CFO of a client. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's not a client he's on. Obviously, he can't work on it. Right. But, but you could lose the client if, correct. if he gets fired. Correct. And so finally, everybody's been pussyfooting around it where I got told by my boss's boss, they're like, you can't fire this guy yet. We're trying to figure something out here. Yeah. So now that he had, nobody will use him. He's been, you know, milking this shit for a couple months. Finally, on Friday, I called him and I said, look, 
I said, here's the truth. I said, if not for your dad, we would have fired you a long time ago. You got to get out of here. You got to find a job. So he's like, well, thanks for the honesty. And he's like, I can appreciate it. So he's hopefully he'll get out in a couple of weeks because now we're it's the new budget season, you know, everything. So right. now it's like he's on he's on the list. So he's got to get out of here. Yeah, no shit. How's the weather been in uh, Connecticut? Um, we had today was great. 91 degrees, a little bit hot in the sun, not bad in the shade. But, you know, this is the crazy thing about spring. It's 50 degrees warmer than last week. 50. You just said you so, just said a word that I never ever use. Spring. Spring. It, it was 107 today God. in Phoenix. What's it going to be like when I'm out there next month? Hotter than 107. So you picked July. I told you. You know, you've been out here before, like hundreds of times. Like you know the weather. You know the patterns. It's going to be like 110 one year. Great. I yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> Everybody so, knows how much I don't like uh, the heat. So yeah, good. I just, I mean, the, I just haven't, we we never have a spring. We have a winter, which is kind of, and then we have, you know, we have a fall, we have a winter, and then it's summer. Like, there's not just no spring. And fall lasts like I, two weeks. I remember the very first time I came out to see you in, in winter. I was young, right? Never, didn't have any real experience with the weather. Granted, you had no clothes. Yeah, you didn't bring a jacket. <laughs> I didn't bring any jackets. I only brought shorts. And then at night it was like fucking thirty five degrees. Yeah. No, like, what it, the fuck? It gets pretty cold in the winter. Yeah, people don't realize that. That's I mean, if it weren't for Phoenix winters, I would have left the state a long time ago. But the the winters out here are phenomenal. I mean, they don't get they do get cold, but you know they're, they're it's only cold for a couple of weeks, maybe a month. Um, but I mean, when it's you know November, it's like seventy degrees out. December, you know, sixty five degrees out. You can't beat the winners here. Yeah, those aren't bad. Light, light sweater weather is great. Yeah. Um, you ever eaten dim sum? Do you know what dim oh, sum I is? I love dim sum, yeah. I like most Asian foods. Dim sum is probably one of my favorites, though. So you can put that on the list while we're out there if there's any dim sum places. But there's, yeah, you know what? There's a, there's a, I don't, can I call it a Chinatown? Yeah, I guess that's still okay to say that. There's a Chinatown area in Phoenix that has a ton of super authentic, like, dim sum places. So you didn't we used to call it Oriental Village? (laughs) (laughs) This is is the racist episode. (laughs) The Amazing Racist. That's been episodes one through 26. Have have you ever seen the Amazing Racist videos? Oh, my God. All right. So, you know, there's a show called The Amazing Race, right? Yep. And um, and, and I don't want to make light of racism because... This country is fucked. I mean, we, we've talked about racism in, in the last episode quite extensively, so much so that I think I included it in the liner notes <laughs> as a warning to people. But um, uh, The Amazing Race was this show, you know, where people would go on and race for a million bucks or whatever. Um, right around that time when that show became really popular, some jack off decided to do a bunch of YouTube videos and he named them The Amazing Racist. And he's this Jewish guy, and he would just don't go do the craziest shit. Like one episode, he picked up a bunch of day laborers, which we also talked about last episode, mm-hmm. right? And he drove them. He put them in the back of his pickup truck, and then um, he was drove in an area where there were speed bumps, and he was like flooring it over the speed bumps, and they were in the back, and they were like, hey! And then he drove them to the uh, INS building, Immigration Services, and then started honking the horn, and then they all got out and scattered. He just did stupid shit. Like he he would set up a, a table out in front of a um, a mosque, and he would put calendars on it that said like the women of Islam. And he was as people were coming out of the mosque, he would try and sell them <laughs> these these calendars, and they were so offended. And and oh man. But anyways, see, but that's also the kind of shit. Like you know, there's a lot of zealots out there, and I'm not even talking about Muslims or anything. Just in general. Mm-hmm when you start pushing some boundaries, that's when like you, you put yourself at risk, yeah. right? It's not just a kind of a, a joke about it. Yeah. Anymore. But these videos and got look, millions I... and millions of views. And this was before like YouTube was popular. So most of them were spread via email, which is just crazy to think. You know, when email first started, I remember people spreading shit through email at work where it was like mm-hmm. dirty stuff, curses. Like there was no, there was no both filter literally for work and filter mentally yeah, for the people for sure. to be like maybe I you knew exactly who the sickos email. were right away because they would just yeah. start sending that shit out and like you said you know like here's the, here's the problem that you and i both suffer from something can be wrong 
something could be something we realize should not be said. Something shouldn't be repeated, but sometimes it's also funny. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the problem. And so that's what ends up getting you in trouble. Cause you and I both know the person we won't name names. We won't even name nicknames who once said, you know, what's great about racism. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I can't believe you worked that into an episode. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, moving on. <laughs> uh, right. What's, what's the so, one crazy question? One crazy question, jury duty. Um, you let slip before we started that you've never been on jury duty. So well, I can, I can explain that. The one crazy question is, would you lie to get out of it or would you do your civic duty? Go okay. Um, well, let me, I'll, I'll answer it after I tell you this. So ironically enough, what are you eligible for, for jury duty once you're 18, right? As soon as you turn 18? Yeah. I think so. Um, Probably. You could be from drafted 18 that until 42, never got a single mm -hmm. request for jury duty. Not a single piece of mail, not a phone call, nothing. Don't know why. It's Don't know run. how, but never, you know, if it's truly random, then I was very lucky and I should have been playing the lottery or going to Vegas when every year when that happened because I never got picked. And then a few years ago... I finally got my first jury duty notice. I was so fucking excited. I'm like, I hope I get a capital murder case. I hope I get, like, I was absolutely excited. And so the day before, you know, you're supposed to show up, you call the number, and they were like, oh, your group didn't get picked. So I didn't go. Didn't happen again until three or four months ago. So I've gotten two, exactly two, jury duty notifications. And once again, I called the day before and... They said, you know, your group, your group hasn't been called. So, um, and you know, there was also COVID. So I don't, I think if, even if they would have done it, it would have been something remote, but I actually would love to do jury duty. I would love to, because I feel like it would be kind of exciting. Uh, I've never actually had a chance to. So here's the problem, right? And so many things are now intertwined. And this is the reason why maybe it's heightened where you're getting called. Nowadays, when you change your license address, sometimes it registers you to vote. It puts you on these registers for jury duty. It's like all these different shits are interconnected. So you think you want to do jury duty until you go in. And so I've been on, I've been called a couple times and I've actually never served on the actual jury. But unlike you, you know, because in, in New York and Connecticut, what you do is you don't just call in for one day. You have a week that's dedicated. And that Monday you call in and they're like, nope, you're not, your number's not included. Call back tomorrow. Your number's not included. And then if you get through that whole week, technically it's considered you served and you get that exemption, which state is like three years and federal is like seven or something like that. So for one, I get called in and they're like, um, okay, it's a grand jury for money laundering. We expect the case to take six months. And they're like, now we're going to ask some questions. And, I'm not a lawyer. But you are Italian, and immediately your Italianness is going, oh, fuck no, I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is this for or against it? That's what I should have asked. <laughs> Might have to rat a friend so out or a relative. They start asking. Yeah. <laughs> is his name, last name ended in O? Uh, so you, um, they, both uh, the prosecutor and the defense have like, I don't know, three, five, whatever people that they can just kick off. There has to be no reason. They're just like, I don't like this person. They're gone. So they go through some of those. And then they ask a ton of questions to the whole group. They're like, we're going to ask you 10 questions. And they're like, we want you to raise your hand for the ones that affect you. So the questions were everything like, um, have you ever been on a jury before? Um, do you have any lawyers in your family? Do you do this? So there's all these different questions. So the one that came up for me was, um, have you ever known somebody who's done what could be considered money laundering <laughs> <laughs> and they're like okay come up so i go up and they start asking me some questions and they're like well what, what do you mean how, how did you know somebody i said look in college i said i worked for a guy who was a cash business i said and he knew not to deposit ten thousand dollars a day because if you do that it goes to the feds so i said so he intentionally worked around it and deposited always under 10 grand a day. So it didn't register. So, and the judge was like, okay, he's like, yeah, you, you can't be on this case. So 
the guy obviously was trying to get the guy off. I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> like, this guy's not the worst. He's uh, He's been around this before. So he's like, he, he pulled the judge aside. He asked him a couple questions. The judge was like, okay, I'll ask him. He's like, I don't think it's going to work, but I'll ask him. He comes back and he goes, two questions. He goes, did you know at the time that there was a $10,000 limit? And I said, yes. He said, did you know at the time the guy was intentionally breaking yeah. the law? And I'm like, I can't, I can't get in trouble here, can I? And he's like, oh, no. You can't. I'm like, yeah, I knew he was intentionally bringing love. Like, you're gone. So that was one of them. The second time, again, same type questions, had to do with a cop. I don't remember what the case was, but it had to do with a cop. Do you know any cops? Raise my hand. He said, like, all right, come up. So now you know this cop. He's come to Vegas. Mm-hmm. He's one of the guy's brothers, right? He's fucked up. He's a vice cop. And so this is a guy who has fake IDs, fake social security number, fake bank accounts, because he works undercover. And he's told us some stories that are he's gotten away with insane. some crazy shit. Yes. And and there's been times where he's actually said, yeah, I know I'm not supposed to do that. Who the fuck is going to believe, <laughs> me or her? Right? So, <laughs> so they're like, do you know any cops? Like, I raised my hand. They called me up. They're like, who do you know? I said, well, one of my friends, I said, who I go away with every single year, said his brother's a cop and he's come. And he's like, well, okay. So he's like, you're not very close to him. I go, yeah, but he's told me fucking stories. I go, that there's no way I think that cop's telling the truth on the stand. So he's nice. like, you can go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've I've been told so, uh, a, a number of ways to get out of jury duty. Of course, which I've never really wanted to. But, you know, one of the, the pieces of advice that was given to me is if they ask you, you know, if you if you dislike a certain race or, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the correct response is to say, yeah, I'm not a fan. And immediately, like, yeah, they've gotten rid of they've gotten really? rid of that exemption, wow. though. Yeah, they don't allow you to say because if the guy, and I'll use sure. Italian because it's safe for us to say, but if they're like the guy's Italian, you're like, yeah, I don't like Italians. Really? You can't use that defense anymore. They ask other questions. You can't just get off on that. So one other thing that happened: my mom got called for jury duty many, many years ago. So I brought her in, and what we did was mm-hmm. look. My mom speaks broken English, but she speaks English enough, and she understands English enough. But we went in. And I told them she couldn't speak any English. And so everything they had to tell her, they told me and I translated for my mom. And then my mom answered and I translated it back for them. So they're like, okay, you know, this you can't do this. So here's a lifetime exemption. So my mom being happy about it, fucking told her sisters. And then I had to do it for <laughs> two others of them. Also, I had to go in and do it. It's because you're the hookup. When they got called for jury duty, I had to go <laughs> in the and they didn't speak English. Nice. Yeah. You got a fact and a falsehood for me today? Um, this this game's getting old because I don't fact think I've won one of these in like fucking five episodes, but go ahead. I was like 2-0. and oh, Remember in the beginning, you <laughs> yeah. were like, I'm 2-0. and oh. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> Fucker. Suck a dick. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll mix it up. We'll do something else next week, starting next week. All right. A fact and a falsehood. One, I would write letters to Santa all year long as a kid because I figured it couldn't hurt. Two, was accidentally given a final exam the day before a test. I made copies and gave it to the other classmates in college. In college? Mm-hmm. See, I would have thought you would have done that in high school. And you're also somewhat illiterate, so writing letters for you is n- and lazy as a motherfucker. <laughs> so writing letters for you is not your not your gig. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, ah, man, if you wouldn't have said in college... I would have jumped all over that, but you said in college and that one kind of threw me off because I don't, I don't think you would have done that in college. Although last episode, you said that you uh, handed in a paper in college and, uh, and it wasn't your paper and then argued for the, <laughs> the validity of it being an A paper as opposed to Correct. the C that you got or the D, whatever I it was. I an A paper. I wanted a better grade <laughs> than I was getting. I paid for that shit. I want an A. <laughs> Um, I, I don't, I honestly don't see you writing letters to Santa at all. So I almost feel like that has to be the one that's wrong. There's just no way. <laughs> all right. So the one that's wrong or the one that is a falsehood is I used to write letters to Santa all year round. Yeah, so I, you're I just don't see note. you doing that one. <laughs> so now in college, when, when I'm my, my last year of college, I was an intern. And at a a public accounting firm. And during that time, it was when we had to have a test. Mm -hmm. So that 
the internship and then the CPA exam, kind of it was a big problem. They were all around the same time. So I talked to the teacher about, hey, can I take the exam on a different day? Because, um, you know, I got the CPA exam that Thursday, which is when you're giving in. I also work on Friday, so I can't even come in on Friday and do it. So he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. He's like, come in, go to the main office, tell them you're there. They'll have a test for you. He's like, go take the test and we'll be done. So I'm like, okay. So I go, I ask for, give him my name. Lady's like, there's nothing here for you. So I'm like, he said he was going to leave it. You know, it should be here. She's like, there's nothing here for you. So I'm like, motherfucker. So I had something with me that I had a copy. So I'm like, can I use the copier before I go? She's like, yeah, absolutely. So I go into the copier. In front of the copier are shelves, like mailboxes and shit. And I see the fucking thing with my name on it. (laughs) So I'm like, wait a minute. So I take it and it was the test. It was the final. Mm. So I'm like looking left, looking right, (laughs) run it through the copier, (laughs) put it back in the envelope, put it back on the shelf and leave. So then I called. So my class, you know, typical college class has 30, 40 people, whatever it is. But there was seven or eight of us who really got along really well. So I called them all up and I'm like, you guys got to fucking meet me (laughs) tomorrow. (laughs) You got to meet me down at this place. So we all met and I'm like, I got the fucking final. And so we all took the final and all studied it and stuff and then be able to um, uh, answer it. So we all got really good grades. The one thing that was funny was one of the guys kind of, I think, rushed through the exam a little. And the way the questions were stapled, you know, every once in a while that staple gets really high up and the wording gets really high up. So he missed a fucking couple of questions. Jesus Christ. So we all got like 90s and he got like an 82. (laughs) And we're like, what the fuck happened? You had the exam. He's like, I missed a couple of questions on top. Oh, that's pretty funny. So that happened in college. That's funny because statute limitations over though. Yeah, right? I don't think you can get in trouble for that. But uh, I just, I never, I knew you were a poor um, high school student because I, I mean, I used to take get half days and then I'd be, you know, riding the bus home and then you'd jump on the same bus and I'm like, oh, you got a half day today? And you're like, nope, <laughs> just going home. Don't want to go to class. <laughs> I, so I, I knew that about you in high school, but I figured because you took a hiatus between high school and college. I figured by the time you got to college, you would have wanted to go to college. Not only that, you were fucking paying for it. So you would yeah, yeah. And I want did. to do well. I did. So, look, I, I actually liked college because I remember specifically the first couple classes of college. I said the same wise as shit I said in high school. And the teacher was just like, no, okay. yeah. like, didn't complain, didn't throw me out. Was just like, yeah, whatever. Um, and like you said, there's a lot of teachers who were like, look. You're paying mm-hmm. to be here. You don't want to fucking come? Don't come. I don't give a shit. They're like, it's your fucking life. And so that freedom and basically forcing responsibility on me was way different than high school. And as you know, I'm not a big fan of authority. I never have been. So that side of it was like mind blowing mm-hmm. to me. And I remember teachers cursing in college. That was the other thing that I was like, that guy just said fuck. <laughs> that guy just said fuck. I'm pretty sure that guy said fuck. So it was all of that combined. So I did. And I did very well in college. But you can't fucking, if you're going to throw something like that on my lap, I mean, what, what am I, what was anybody I supposed to do? I think the correct do? phrase is you can take the boy out of the street, but you can't take the street out of the boy. <laughs> and with that, I'm Michael Carter. And I'm David Michael. And we are Ridiculously, ridiculously bored. bored. And bad people. <laughs> and horrible people. But everybody knew that already, so no big deal. <laughs> <laughs>